Good day, everyone. Here we are in the continuation of our lecture for uh, today. We will continue with the history of agribusiness in the Philippines. But uh, uh, it would also touch more on the, the recent development or the current development of agribusiness in the Philippines and some uh, challenges from 2020 and beyond. Now, uh, last last meeting, we discussed about uh, the, the, the traditional or the dualistic uh, agribusiness systems in the Philippines. We have the traditional agribusiness where it's based on uh, subsistence agriculture. And then you have also a, a fast becoming modern, uh, not traditional rather, uh, agribusiness systems. But there is a what we call as dualistic uh, development this time. There are still pockets or segments of our agribusiness uh, say, uh, systems in the Philippines that are still rather uh, subsistence or backward in a way. But more of the current developments in the agribusiness are already advancing towards traditional. In fact, some are already uh, uh, applying the technological applications of the fourth industrial revolution, that is the application of information and communications technology. But before we are going to go to go there, because I'm going to just touch that a little bit in the in the succeeding modules down below. Now, this particular lecture today will touch will transition from history and also to the current challenges of agribusiness in the Philippines, particularly what is, uh, what are some of the pressing issues in the agribusiness in the Philippines. So this time we'll uh, tackle on the introduction and the current state of food and agribusiness in the Philippines, challenges from 2020 and, and beyond. Okay, so uh, in terms of uh, uh, refreshing us a, 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 a little bit, agribusiness as a system or agribusiness as a field of study. We, we see in this particular uh, uh, say figure that agribusiness system as a whole is actually composed of what we call as the input or aqua input or aquaculture. And then you also have like the production sector, which is at the center, the processing and the marketing sector. In other words, the production sector is the hub or the connection between input and, of course, the, the, the final product of agribusiness. In other words, if uh, agribusiness, if we look at the entire system, it's, it is the whole connection. It is the whole gamut of connection from input until the final sale. Okay, And then, more importantly, its sector in this diagram actually are interdependent with one another. One sector cannot function very successfully or effectively if uh, the other sectors or one or few other sectors are not functioning very well. Okay, So that is the, the visualization of the, the world of agribusiness. Now, how large is agribusiness? How large is, for example, in the Philippines? How large is it? Now, in the Philippines, agribusiness is actually, uh, uh, say, for example, in terms of gross domestic product, you know, in the Philippines, it's actually expected to contribute about 33%. You know? in, uh, in fact, the, the slowing down of, uh, say, for example, agribusiness in the Philippines or the economy in the Philippines is largely due to a uh, sluggish growth in the, the agriculture sector. Why? Because agri agribusiness is actually the most important employer of the entire sectoral, uh, say, breakdown of the economy. It employs about 66% of the labor force in the country. No, it employs 66%. Most of that are undocumented because what can you what can you expect? People working in the farm, they don't have. Uh, uh, SSS, they don't have uh, field health except for 
PhilHealth uh, due to the barangay affiliation. But in terms of labor unions, labor registration, they don't have it because mostly are on call and temporary status. But they're working. Uh, they're working. In fact, I myself, I have a worker going working in my little uh, property now, which is actually a little garden. So they're working, but it's it's the it's in the informal sector of the economy. So the 66 percent is really just an underestimation of how large this agribusiness in terms of uh, employment of people in the labor force. Now, production system occupies half of the 30 million hectares in the Philippines. Okay, imagine there are 30 million hectares of arable land in the Philippines. Half of that is actually used for agribusiness uh, purposes. Okay, so the 30 million hectares already includes forest and also all other protected areas. But there are already, say, for example, allocations for that. No? Now, aside from food production, uh, it's also uh, very important that really our government has to uh, uh, address development in terms of making use or addressing the issue on uh, food or self-sufficiency in food. Now, the country will not progress very much if agriculture is left behind. In other words, if food uh, as a very important uh, uh, engine of development is not addressed, name a country with uh, uh, having a food crisis, for sure, it's going to be 101%. The fiat country will really experience the sluggish to negative growth. Okay, So even countries around us like Thailand, Vietnam, and other countries, their, their, food, in the, their food in the country is really very accessible and very affordable. And that look at their economic growth. They're very fast. They're very fast. Uh, for example, in the Philippines, or in comparing it, our, our country with, for example, Thailand, Thailand is paying uh, food for, for example, rice, 50% lower than what the Philippine uh, consumers are paying. And look what is what's happening to their country. It's growing faster than our country in terms of the like, deve overall development. Why? Because for every household, the food basket or the food budget rather the food budget for the total household expenditure constitutes about 60 percent you can just imagine you you provide a very cheap uh, food source very affordable and accessible uh, food source and cut down the food expenditure by 50 percent you will end up having a disposable income available disposable income for other purposes by the household and that will just spar uh, other economic uh, activities that will also contribute to economic growth. So th this is really very critical. No? Every household spend about 60% of their budget on food. So if you address that particular area, then uh, for sure the economy will have uh, so much space for other developmental initiatives. Now, really, the, the this particular sector of food production is the centerpiece of agribusiness. Now, we, we also have what we call as one very important component in agribusiness is the input subsector or input subsystem. By the way, we can use interchangeably uh, agribusiness sector or agribusiness system, uh, agribusiness subsector or agribusiness subsystem. It's uh, just we're referring to the same thing. No? Now, the, the agribusiness com is composed of five subsectors or subsystems. First one is the input subsystem or input subsector. Now, this one, actually, from the word input subsector, it provides input for to run the production activities of the, uh, of the, of the farm or the agribusiness uh, players. So it provides fertilizer, it provides feed, fry, it provides credit, it provides equipment and all other inputs used in the farm, including labor. Okay, If there is a problem with labor, if labor is expensive, it will end up 
relic, a very expensive or very high production cost. With that, there is high production cost, price of prime commodities or price of agribusiness products will also be uh, inflated. Okay, now that means uh, uh, input subsector is a very critical part of uh, agribusiness subsystem. The total level of inputs remains stagnant after the war. Okay, so that means we need to improve on the quality and the quantity and the nature of our inputs. Since uh, since the since World War Two, our our mechanization, for example, as one of the inputs, is slugging behind. It is slugging behind other countries in the in Asia. Our rate of mechanization, for example, in the in terms of mechanization, our rate of mechanization is less than is even less than uh, one horsepower per hectare per year. Compare it with China, with uh, Thailand, they have they have almost like a double digit number of horsepower, maybe from one to ten hor uh, horsepower per hectare per year. Okay, that's a uh, because we remain to be animal driven. <laughs> animal driven carabao is always the symbol of our mechanization but it's improving this time but we have so much to catch up actually because from the current uh, statistics or uh, that i know now input uh input uh, like uh subsystem okay the input uh, uh subsystem is really what is really uh, improving, although we have so much, still so much to be desired. You know? Our current statistics, I think, is about 0.66 horsepower per hectare per year. And then during that time, China was already 4, 4.5 horsepower per hectare per year. And South Korea is about 7. You know? And Thailand is about uh, almost, almost 4 horsepower per hectare per year. Okay, so that is... Uh, we have so much to catch up. And then we also have a lot of uh, problem in terms of Im input, importation of inputs. Okay. Now, in the production subsector, the next, the most important uh, subsector in our business, our farms are fragmented. That's also creating us a lot of challenge also. Now, uh, fragmented farms, what will happen? it will also have product fragmented production system now in other countries we might we might reason out that uh, because our farm sizes in our country is very small that's why farmers are cultivating small areas and you know it's difficult to coordinate and that's why uh, very inefficient farming operation if we accept that as the, the main reasoning well what can we what can we say in other countries, like developed countries in Europe or even other countries around around us, even in Japan, the per capita land holding is also very small. How can they can produce so much? The one area, one one observation that I made that I actually have uh, known from their end is that, for example, in Europe, we we were asking one particular farmer, "Do you own these huge tracts of land that you are cultivating and planting with tulip or with planting with?" whatever industrial crops they have. And he said, and even even dairy farming, no, even dairy farming. And that guy told me that no, I rent I'm renting. Because some areas here, they are going to the city and they are doing something else. But I rented their land and consolidate everything and produce this much of output. Also, they, they, it's it's possible in their country. They have they have a different they are more progressive in terms of their attachment to land. But in our country, uh, it's difficult to do that. Why? Uh, people, even though their land are not, are not really very productive, and if there are people, if there are persons who are interested to rent, they wouldn't do that because they, they are afraid of uh, their land being grabbed by somebody else. And that is a notion that is ingrained culturally. But actually, that is a problem of, you know, that is a problem that cultural, say, affinity or a, a say, problem could be addressed by legislation. Why? In other countries, they have a very transparent and very stable land 
administration land use and manage land land administration and management law in other words all uh, all uh, land holdings are properly documented nobody can elog that nobody can grab that in just any anyhow so complete of papeles but in our country we have a very fluid land ownership that's why i look it at my elog why the papeles the 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 papers that we are holding is actually it's not even the it's not even the no, the current uh, title or the current document we're holding some somebody else's title maybe from our ancestors in other words the the land holding certification that we have is not uh, up to date and that creates a problem in terms of land allocation okay that creates a problem in terms of land allocation so that's what one particular area that it's also constraining the productivity and productive use of our uh, land for uh, the production sector no? you ask maybe in a ratio of in a scale of one to ten basin of seven to eight ang mga land, land holding there is a bye bye wala pag no and that's really something that i know that is uh, bugging us down so that is one challenge in the production sector yeah pwede pa nimo parenta ka may mo ilog anak ko manang litan og kunjud kompleto pag papilis pero bakit papilis aw listen kid no so that's one thing and for if we are going to use that for corporate farming very ano very uh, efficient if our papers are also ano complete complete and of course adoption of new technology and plus of course we are fragmented in terms of uh, uh, collectively organizing ourselves to do a certain farming agribusiness activities in order to take advantage of the economies of scale wala um had look tama join join or whatever uh, consolidation uh, effort why because our status in terms of ano uh, is very uncertain tenure status sige adi mo puno ako yuta di na ko appeal niya or something like that uh, do you want to adapt this kind of technology mm, depends because i cannot decide i'm only a tenant here and the owner will say ah oh, never mind uh, my my document might be discovered uh, uh, this this uh, area is not properly documented in term or registered yet so i would rather uh, so what happens very there so much loss of opportunity in the production sector much more uh, much more there are a lot of other intertwined issues in the land sector that really constrain productive use of land in the philippines okay but to think about the production sector it is the most important and singly single important hub of the agribusiness uh, system now what does this mean now this mean this means that all other sectors whether upstream or downstream sectors of agribusiness depends on the proper or efficient use of land and much more our land in the philippines especially are highly vulnerable to climatic and weather condition look at what happens to the land ownership in uh ano, in Sitio or Bar Barangay Cantagnos in Bay Bay City. There was a community, there were pockets and parcels of land, and suddenly there was a flash flood, and then all of a sudden, after maybe a few hours, you can not anymore locate your parcel of land because all everything will get eroded and brought down into the river, denuded into the river, and there goes your piece of property and what remains is a an eroded area where you cannot even locate the monument now okay much more if you don't have the monument you don't know the boundary you don't have the title of that property so how can you locate okay so problema kanang sa sitio kan tagnos wala na i don't know how to how to regain their identity even if you own a tax declaration or you have a piece of property with certain boundary marker, you cannot anymore locate your property and it cannot even be asserted in the re register of deeds because you don't have any title. 
So that's why climatic condition also to protect us against the uh, uh, traumatic damage of this particular weather or extreme weather condition, which is very common this time, have our area titled or land titled or registered. You tell your parents, Tai, Nai, tituladon ni atong yuta. Because if not, that will just contribute to a very inefficient production subsector in the Philippines. Now, in the production subsector also, very importantly, land allocation is, ano, because uh, specialization this time is very important. Specialization and synchronization of production activities. Okay? Uh, that is a very important advantage in countries like, for example, Vietnam. Kung ng ilang, uh, ilang government niya, okay, kaning catchment area will plan together. Pag-tanong gina at the same time. Why? Planting together will just cut the biological cycle of pest. If you cut the biological cycle of pest, that will be a huge savings in terms of pest control. Because if if it's if it is not done, look at look at look what hap, what is happening around us. You don't need to go somewhere just observe what is happening in Bye Bye or even in Guadalupe, the the rice farm here. If you visit there, you can see all the stages of production existing, planting, following. You have harvestable. You have uh, growing area. You have seedlings, etc. What happens? The the pest will just hop from one stage to another. In other words, there is a complete array of stages of production that also the development of pests just matches with what, whatever existing uh, stages of production that is available. So instead of cutting the biology of pests, you are actually sustaining them. That's why we, we, don't, we don't also... Uh, Synchronous, uh, uh, same say, systematically cut our pest control expenditure because every time na adjuta pest. Why? Because wala man. But at man ng atong tanong, everything, kung yung stem borer, oh, pag grow sa imong ano, pag grow sa imong rice, na harvest na tong pinanggalingan sa stem borer, anak na sa imong po, butapon. Pag anak na anak. Takun-takun, okay? Pag seedling stage, oh, naana po. Oh, naana po itong pest. No? Specialization and synchronization, very important in the production sector. Plus, of course, there is a problem of uh, monsoon and climatic changes which cause instability. And you know, I don't, have, I don't need to explain so much on this particular aspect. Our farm farms in the Philippines are always an time and time again subjected to uh, extreme and very unusual and very uh, erratic climatic condition. Okay? So it's creating a problem not only on production but also distribution and other activities in the farm operation. And that will make our system more inefficient. Okay? Climate and other things and of course we have also from production sector we'll go we'll go down to the manufacturing sector why did i why did i say go down because in the total agribusiness system if you look at the entire agribusiness system it's actually uh, an activity upstream from the input and then output then downstream processing, and then downstream most marketing. Okay? So it's flowing. The activity is cascading from upstream, but from the farm until the market. That's that's the entire loop of agribusiness. Now let's, up, let's take a look at processing or manufacturing subsector. Okay? Now our manufacturing subsector includes packaging, distribution, and of course the uh, distribution entails uh, selling it to the market. Now, in, in, in processing, it could be processed food or it could be partially processed food. Okay? 
na ay completely pop pressure that means nakapack na siya with longer shelf life and of course with ano with like uh, there are also partially pressure that are still perishable but ready to eat for example okay so that goes with like products from agriculture and products from aquaculture so what's happening in the philippines our processing subsector is also dependent on the uh, production subsector if there is something happening in the production subsector it will impact on the processing kung mahal ang raw materials from agriculture production mahal po ang ano processed product so we cannot avoid but to buy it from other countries for a cheaper and more cost effective just like for example just like uh ketchup or tomato paste or even sardines sardines is a finished product from what finished product from processing fish and of course with other ingredients no aquaculture why i'm telling you this uh, sardines what is sardines sardines is just some fish in the the ocean kind of fish and then you kind of uh, pressure cook that and add tomato sauce now where is agribusiness there of course there is the thin cut thin cut where is agribusiness there huge amount first first the tomato sauce from tomato paste that's very very important uh, output in agribusiness second is the is the fish which is from aquaculture from i know from uh, from fishery sector which is still part of agribusiness so sauce alone is actually 30 percent of the cost of sardines sauce huh? in the philippines that is 60 percent why because we import a lot of tomato paste we import a lot of tomato paste pilang sardines karun, so 30 percent of that the size or maybe seven pesos seven pesos and sabaw lang okay diba pwede guay sabaw no sabaw lang another 30 percent or maybe more than 30 percent ang tin can now let's talk about this paste the paste we import a lot samantalang with a very in, in samantalang our our ano our our farmers in the philippines are even throwing oversupply of tomatoes what if we process that into tomato paste why can't we do that problem distribution and access it's not that they are protesting something it's because of distribution that distorts the value chain of tomatoes at certain time you have i know you have a, a an oversupply at certain time you have sure things okay so there is really a need a need to address this particular problem in the at the production sector okay so we what we happen we import that from pakistan because barato ilang tomato paste the importation will also uh, be what we are dependent on on current supply what about kung magmahal sa pakistan apektado ta okay so something like that not so that's that makes it very you know very interdependent yeah whatever happens at the production sector, it will impact on the manufacturing sector if you can just cut that cost of uh, tomato paste we will also find ourselves nga ano mabarato ang tinapa uh, thailand is really producing tawag na nilang in their own language plakapong plakapong is uh fish in can no fish in can that means sardines mo na ila so tapa ko ana kana dito barato na sa ila siguro ang presyo ana sa sa kuan ikompara sa ato murag murag ang ilang presyo kung 20 ang ato ang ilang siguro aras mga 15 14 ang ilang tinapa no barato sila because why they produce so much tomatoes also gamay ra yung importation okay so that's something and then of course uh, we have some uh we have some what they call as uh, import as, uh, support like for example eo24 i think if i may recall is correct uh if we import other ingredients wala na tariff or free na siya exempted na for for tariff that's to support our processor but 
the biggest hurdle is raw materials no for processing no? and then the processing sector really is also uh, largely enough uh, largely uh, labor dependent if our if our labor is already expensive also then we will find ourselves na uh, ano, uh, very uh, what's this uh, the mercy of the labor sector no so there is a need nga i, i, ano, i, uh, i, uh, what's this to mechanize further our ano, our sector no then we also have one particular subsector which is support or facilitating sector what are these these are uh, facilitating sector is a sector in agribusiness or subsystem in agribusiness that uh, supports or enhance the normal functioning of each and every sector in the in the entire subsystem okay in the entire entire agribusiness system what what do we what do i mean by that for example credit as provided by banks what will what will that uh, how 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 will that impact on the entire business functioning provides credit that means you are able to run the i know you you run the factory able to buy uh, your raw materials and able to buy other things that will get all the activities moving that's one another is for example, uh, source of seed or uh, breeding, uh, say, for example, agencies, entities. This also supports in terms of providing quality seeds, poor quality among seeds, or breeders that provides a good breed of animals for livestock production. That's very important. And other things, information support, information support in agribusiness. Because we need that in order to bind all the other sectors or subsectors together so that the entire agribusiness system will function normally at the very effective and efficient say for example uh, output okay and then we have also what we call as the distribution or uh, say marketing subsystem which promotes the agribusiness uh, what agribusiness say uh, functioning in terms of distribution and exchange of goods and services so with with that note that i know that uh, just introduce everybody to the what to the uh, understanding from where we were before in history and what's going on in our uh, current agribusiness development Okay, so we know already that agribusiness in the Philippines constitutes these five different subsectors. You have the input, the output on the production, the processing, the facilitating, and the marketing subsector or subsystem. They are very interdependent, or they are interdependent rather. Whatever happens to the to one system will impact on all the rest of the subsystems. So that there is a need for proper coordination and there is a need to have a systems look <coughs> at the entire agribusiness system okay later on a little later from here we will look we will study about the agribusiness system and why it should be why it should have a systems view of the entire agribusiness system okay so we'll stop the lecture from here and of course we will uh, what we will uh, say uh, uh, continue our lecture in the pressing issues in uh, uh, in the agribusiness systems in the philippines this will be discussed in the next uh, lecture session we call what lies ahead for food and agribusiness in the philippines challenges and expectation also 2020 and beyond okay so i'll end up this lecture today and i'll let's see our uh, we'll, uh, let's uh I'll, I'll see you again in my next series of lecture okay uh